Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Natural Living. It is lovely to have you here. So in today's video, I it was kind of an amalgamation of stuff I've just been getting up to during the week and mainly during the weekends because, you know, the nine to five, you can't, you can't do much during the week. But um, a lot of it is kind of home renovation bits and bobs. So just updates around the home. So first off, we're going to start with me just styling up this shelf that we've had in our kitchen, basically. I don't know about you, but when it is the summertime or the spring and the seasons kind of start to change, I just kind of get this new zest of life and I need to change my surroundings. I am very much a person who is affected by their surroundings and I think I'm quite sensitive to the seasons changing perhaps because I do enjoy living so in tune with them. I think it's really important to kind of honour the changing of the seasons and to work alongside them rather than working against them. I'm sure I am not the only one who when the seasons start to change I just feel like I need to give my surroundings a new zest for life particularly I think because I work from home so I spend a lot of time at home and I think it's really important to kind of keep that energy flowing at your house because I, I know it's feng shui, but I definitely do believe the energy can get quite stagnant. So when it comes to the changing of the seasons, it's kind of time to shake up that energy again in a way. And you'll see that in a second. I'm going to cleanse my crystals and basically redo those, which again helps with this energy flow. So you can see I'm basically just playing around with things here and figuring out what works best. A lot of this stuff I tend to find in, you know, charity shops or, I mean, for example, that olive um, olive oil jug that I showed over there on the right hand side, that's from Greece. It's from a holiday we went on. So it's all kind of just seeing everything together like this makes me happy because it's almost like a collage of my life and our experiences together. So here I am going to take you through how I personally cleanse my crystals. So my, my weapon of choice is Palo Santo, as you can see. Personally, I find it much easier to light them using candles rather than a match because it just seems to take an age for, you know, herb bundles or incense or whatever to light from a match. So I tend to light a candle first and then I can light the bundle and it just catches so much quicker. So there's a little tip there. And as you can see, this produces a lot of smoke. This is pretty insane. So I am basically just running my crystals through the smoke here and envisioning any negative or residue energy that I don't want there, leaving the crystal so no energy is basically left behind. And then what I will do after this is recharge them. So that is when I basically set my intentions with the crystals, um, which is essentially you telling the crystals what you want them to do. So you may have seen in my where I put crystals in my home video, I picked out all of these crystals individually. So they will go around my front door, which is where that shelf is. It's kind of in like the entrance way. And they're all there for things like protection, welcoming in money, welcoming in positivity. So that is why I picked those crystals in particular. And here I'm just doing a little DIY terrarium. So I've had this terrarium for ages, but it's kind of a little small to fit in um, a real plant because the real plants just outgrow it so quickly. So I found literally ancient plasticky <laughs> uh, bits of plants in, again, from a previous arrangement. And I've just kind of popped them in there just to add even more greenery. I mean, if you, again, if you've seen the house tour, greenery is just my thing. I absolutely love it. And again, especially during this time of year, as we move into spring and summer, I love introducing more greenery into the home. So it's kind of reflecting the seasons externally, internally. So here I'm just placing the crystals where I think they will sit best and, you know, in kind of partnership. So you can see I've put the selenite with green aventuring for good luck and for prosperity and with a bit of hematite again for that grounding and protection as you enter the home. 
And top feng shui tip, it is also a good idea to light a white candle near your entryway so that it deters any negative energies that people may bring into your home. So that is something that you know you could potentially try. So we can see here one of my favorite crystals, which is a labradorite. I like to have this by the front door because it's a really powerful stone for protection and it helps guard you against negative energies, psychic attacks, and it kind of works as a barrier that prevents like energy leakage, which I think is really important when it comes to the entranceway to your house. You don't wanna invite any of that negativity in. And now I hope you will join me on a stroll through the English countryside and a beautiful local castle to us, which is called Rockingham Castle. So fun fact about me, I absolutely adore history. It is one of my passions in life. I am forever reading about it, listening to podcasts and audiobooks about it. And today it was a glorious sunny day. So we decided to go to Rockingham Castle, which is actually, an, well, it predates the Norman period. It, the foundations come from Roman times, but it was featured in the 1066 Doomsday Book. I love visiting places like this because it, it creates such a sense of awe for me, just seeing this beautiful architecture and the beautiful things that we as humans can achieve collectively. And to preserve this, I think is so, so important, particularly um, in England and in Britain, because we have some really incredible pieces of old architecture that are simply stunning. So for a little bit of information about this castle, as I said, the earliest records of Rockingham is stated in the Doomsday Book in 1066. And the Roman colonizers established a mining community way back when, before William the Conqueror came along. And it was also visited by Henry VIII and his current queen of the time, Catherine Howard, in the 1540s. We were super lucky this day because it was really, really quiet when we went, even though it was a bank holiday. As you can see from the beautiful formal gardens, it was really, really quiet. There wasn't much going on. So it did kind of feel like we almost had the place to ourselves. I love the garden gardens here. The formal gardens are absolutely beautiful, especially in high summer, which is when I went for the first time last year. They did have a little dog festival on, which was so sweet. So I did actually get Ember a little bandana. <laughs> there she is, the star of the show. And yeah, it was an absolutely wonderful day out. So if there are any National Trust houses near you or any castles, I definitely recommend giving them a visit. Hello, so we are on to the next project. Um, so this is our Welsh dresser, which you probably saw, did you see it in the Crystal Collections video? Can't remember. You may or may not have seen our Welsh dresser before. It's next to our fridge and a microwave and all that sort of thing. Um, so we have a freestanding kitchen that I designed in our house. And what I wanted to do was use all of this lovely foliage to basically make like a garland to go along the top of it. Because this is actually quite a dark space in our house because we've got like a big window there and like the entrance way there. This is kind of like the weird in between bit which actually gets quite dark which means I can't have living plants here because they just don't get enough sunlight and they die so what I'm doing instead is using either faux or dried foliage to basically make a garland on the top of the Welsh dresser I'll quickly take you through all of the bits and bobs that I've got but what I'm going to do then is just roll the camera and just make it and basically I'll do a voiceover as I'm going because I don't know about you, but once I'm in the creative flow, <laughs> I can't like stop and start. I have to just go and just make it. Let's go through this now. So one of the first bits I picked up are these kind of fern-like 
fronds. What are they called? Feather ferns. Flocked feather ferns, no less. Um, I'm gonna move that out of the way before I burn things. So these are from Dunham and these were like £2.50. So I think they will look really nice just to add a bit of um, texture and something a little bit different from like all the vibrant greens. What we have next are a lot of these kind of faux potted plants. So I've got loads of different ones. So those are actually from, is it Timu, Timu? I was on like the tightest of tight budgets for this. I really didn't want to spend a lot. And faux greenery is actually really expensive. And I was like, I can't afford to, you know, spend 10, 15 pound on a potted fake plant. So I had, I kind of had to go down the Timu route. I know it's not the best, but also got this beautiful faux fern, which I thought was really, really cool. I've not really seen ferns. This, um, the pots are kind of like the Ikea pots. So that, that was really nice, good quality. I also picked, sorry for all the rustling. <laughs> I picked up also this faux fern, basically. So it's really long. It's got like a little hook here. So it's got two different fronds where you can just have it the whole way. So I thought that was lovely, just again, to add a little bit of different texture. And then of course, we've got two big ivy garlands here that are basically gonna be like the main bulk of it. And they, they literally just run along the whole thing. So it's gonna be a lot of layering and a lot of um, tweaking, I imagine. And then I've got bits and bobs that I've kind of had for years and years and years. So lots of these like faux eucalyptus stands. I think I got these from the range about, gosh, it must've been about five years ago now. So I've got quite a few of those so that they're pretty old, but they'll do that if they're gonna be quite high up and you won't really see. And then I have a lot of forage bits and bobs. So again, these little seed heads that I foraged. I grew a lot of thistles last year in the garden. So I picked them at the end of the season and dried them and they ended up actually in our Christmas displays, a lot of them, but I've kind of kept them and if I can untangle them. So we've got a lot of like mini kind of thistles here, which again, I thought would add like a new dimension and some new texture. And we also have some dried pieces of eucalyptus, like real eucalyptus as well. So that's the plan. We're gonna get going. I'm just gonna get stuck into it. I'm completely winging it. I'm just gonna start off with the base layers and just keep adding to it and tweaking it as I go. We'll see, we'll see what happens, but um, enjoy let me know what you think of it in the comments when it's done nice ones only <laughs> so i thought it would be quite useful just to give you a little kind of step by step what i'm doing here because as i said when i'm in the flow of being creative i don't know if anyone else is like this but i if i'm like stopping and starting and explaining things and changing camera angles my flow is so interrupted and I can't just kind of be creative and go with with the process of what my brain wants to do at, at that particular moment. So what I have done is I've put the ivy up first on top of the dresser, basically because it's kind of like a nice base layer to start off with. And you can see that I'm kind of pulling it around and like pulling it um because it was quite flat when I pulled it out of the packaging. So to give it a bit more depth and make it look bulkier and bushier than it is, I've laid that across the top up there. And I have also put up then the, the fern, because again, it's a different texture. It's a different color as well, actually. So that just adds a bit of dimension to the piece. And then what I'm doing is kind of going in and layering with different pieces of foliage. So I went in with the eucalyptus as like one whole layer and just kind of poked it in through the garland. Then I went in with the dried thistle because again, it gives that kind of added interest and it makes you, it just makes it look more like deep and that there's more kind of going on there, if that makes sense. And then I've been adding in the extra fine little bits like the, 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 I can't remember what it was called, like the fluffy ferns. <laughs> um, and I've added an extra piece of fern at the end on the left there. So it's kind of tumbling down the Welsh dresser. And I think it looks really, really nice. So along the top, I actually do have some LED lights that are plugged into the mains, which work really, really well to basically up light this. So when you walk into the room, it's kind of backlit and it looks really, really cool. What I am going to do though, because I wasn't happy with the doors, I'm actually going to take the doors off, I am thinking, 
and rejig it with a little bit of extra styling, which I will show you in a moment. But I am very pleased with the garland. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's going to be one of those things that I can just like constantly add to as and when I find things and forage things and get them dried. Um, I have actually got some roses that I have dried from Valentine's Day, which I could stick in there, depending on, you know, the occasion and the season. Hello, so it is a few days later now and I finally got around to zhuzhing the Welsh dresser. So I took off the, um, the cupboard doors and by that I mean the top half, not the bottom half, which are these. So I took these off. Essentially, they were incredibly loud if one was to wake up early in the morning and the other person's still in bed and you want to get a tea or a coffee. It's like trying to open them. And I just think that they look a lot nicer without them there. It kind of makes it more like open shelving. And I also think it modernizes it a bit as well, because I always think that there's a balance that you have to strike between old and new things in the home. You don't want things to look dated or out of date, but I love old things. So I think like giving pieces of furniture like this slight tweaks can make, you know, the world a difference in my opinion. So yeah, here it is. I will give you a better close up now without me stood in the way, but I'm very, very pleased with it. I absolutely love it. So here it is from a slight distance. I definitely think it looks so much nicer now that it is opened up like that. I love having the open shelving. I think the mugs themselves are really, really pretty and the glassware, you can actually see it, which I really like. I found, so I'll just take you through quickly. So I got that from Dunnell, that I bought from a charity shop absolutely years ago. Of course, we have a crystal. Um, these little tea light holders are beautiful. They were originally from Marks and Spencers, but I got them from Vinted. A lot of the glassware is from places like, so these top mugs up here are flea markets. These glass ones are Asda and Ikea, and these are mainly TK Maxx. <laughs> and the same with the glasses over here. They're kind of from all over the shop, basically. But what I wanted to do, because this is actually like a working Belfast sink that we incorporated. So I like to have something there for when we leave any washing up for stuff to dry, just so it doesn't damage the wood. I have obviously treated it, but just in case. I've popped a few cookbooks here as well, and the matches that I use frequently to light the wood stove. Obviously another crystal, a piece of black agite. Lovely crystal there. And a wick trimmer, because as you can see, I do actually use them. Top tip, if you do burn a lot of candles and the wick is too long, it does produce a lot of black smoke, which can basically make your walls darker. And because we have white walls, I don't want that, so. <laughs> but yes, we've got like the drapage here, which is a real word, um, drapage. But I think it looks really good. I'm really, really pleased with it now. I feel like this is kind of finished. I do just want to replace the handles to, you know, like the sort of semi-circular, like, cup pull handles in black as well. For these ones, I was thinking some sort of black and silver vintage style handle would look quite cool. And again, down there. Oh, I don't mind Toto eating. <laughs> so, yeah, I am very, very pleased with this. So, that is the end of that vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, just seeing what I get up to. A few little tweakments and bits and bobs going on around the house. I am definitely someone who loves to potter and loves to just tweak things and craft things and do all sorts of bits and bobs like that. So please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're into that kind of thing and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff. So my next video is gonna be a crystal based video. So what I'm gonna do is alternate so you can kind of see what I get up to in terms of more lifestyle stuff. And then we will also include crystal-y type things as well. So they'll, yeah, they'll alternate basically. I'm, I need to stop waffling. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Stay happy and blessed be.